Just start here. Expect more. This is KCEN HD News at 5. We lost 13 great Americans, soldiers from all over the country, from different backgrounds and every generation. But like many of us, they valued that which matters most. Love of family and country, teamwork, unity, humor, kindness, generosity, and the willingness to say, here I am, send me. Those who died and were injured on November 5th, 2009, in the shooting on Fort Hood, will remember today and forever memorialized. Thanks for joining us. I'm Nikki Lorenzo. Hundreds made their way to the Colleen Civic and Convention Center for today's ceremony. That's where we joined Doug Curran, who officiated today's memorial dedication. Doug. Hi, Nikki. It has been a very emotional day for a day that has been a long time in the making. Today we gathered at the Civic uh, and Conference Center in Colleen to honor those who were killed and celebrate the lives and those who were wounded on November 5th, 2009. Congressman John Carter and Governor Abbott were here today to reiterate the fact that the memories will not be lost and that the memorial behind me stands for something. Take a listen. We hope that all of those sitting in this intersection will keep on keeping on through the crisis that has been caused in your family by this evil that befell our community. And remember, we got your back. It's a perpetual way to recognize not only the fallen, not only the injured, but to recognize the way this community comes together to celebrate those who put service first. And joining me now is Dr. Kathy Platoni. She is at the memorial today for a very special reason. You were an eyewitness to the shooting. You were in the room. Tell me what this memorial means for you today. This is truly the crown jewel of memorials to the fallen. Um, though this is a bittersweet experience to see our fallen and our wounded honored in such a magnificent way by the state of Texas and the city of Colleen is just magnificent. And it does bring us a little bit of closure after six and a half years. So this is a very special day. You've walked around the memorial. Have you seen the actual sculptures that they have made? What is, how does that make you feel? You know, to memorialize somebody in such a personal level and to be able to put into, into bronze what was most special to these people is just extraordinary. And Troy Kelly donated all of his time and all of his materials to make these sculptures. I've never seen anything like this anywhere in the United States, so this is pretty extraordinary. And we had a lot of the people who we celebrated their lives today. Those who were wounded came up and got uh, Texas Purple Hearts from the governor. How was that, why was that so special for those who were getting the Texas uh, Purple Hearts? Unlike most of the American populace, because such a small percentage of our population serves in the military, it's so easy to forget, um, to, to not even have any, any idea of a, a war having happened in Afghanistan or Iraq. And so we were often the forgotten, and that truly is the worst casualty of war, to be forgotten. But not here. That hasn't happened in the state of Texas and right here in Colleen. So it's pretty, pretty special. All right, Dr. Kathy Platoni, we appreciate you being here and we appreciate the memorial today. Nikki, back to you. All right, Doug, thanks so much. Now, another key player in making today possible. You heard Dr. Platoni mention him. We're talking about Troy Kelly. He is the designer of the memorial. Our military reporter, Tiffany Pelt, joins us now. Tiffany spent some time with Kelly and got a sense of why this project is so important to him. It has been a very special day for many of the family and friends out here. It took years to complete the memorial you see behind me. Now, the designer, he spent countless hours, sweat and tears building it. And tonight we meet him and the reason why he decided to honor these men and women. I think that art really fills a big void in people's lives. With these hands, put in a kneecap there. He molds and shapes. Time just flies. He carves and he creates. You get totally into it, 
And I've often said that uh, a piece will take on a life of its own. But artist Troy Kelly's biggest labor of love was cast in tragedy. Very often in the studio, when I would leave, I would have a tear in my eye. Six years ago, as a Vietnam veteran, Troy watched the devastation unfold on Fort Hood. My God, it was just horrific. As an artist, he watched and knew what had to be done. It needed to be etched in stone for history. 13 had died, more than 30 injured, and Troy began his new mission. I hoped it would help the families to get relief of their pain. He created the design, the circular pavilion, the flagpole in the center, panels carved with the victims' names, and most importantly, 13 columns to hold his 13 sculptures, each with personal items chosen by the families of the fallen, symbolizing their loved ones. The family sent these objects it made me realize that this object represented at that individual. To strangers, they are simple items, a hat, a rose, a car. To the families, they are memories. I hope that that's what visitors would recognize when they visited the memorial, that this object belonged to an individual. That individual was a member of the family, was a member of a community. As he carefully carved each one in clay, casting them in bronze, making sure each were perfect. One, Francesca Velez was pregnant, continues to haunt him. Several of the witnesses, two to three of them, said that Francesca's last words were, my baby, my baby. You know, every time I tell that story, I'm sorry. I just get so emotional about that because I can picture that scene. And it was just a horrific, horrific scene and the emotion that was involved. To honor the unborn child, he added another sculpture. Francesca's favorite object was a soft Scooby-Doo. So I made a baby Scooby-Doo. And now Francesca's and the others their stories will stand on display for the world to see. It shows we're not defeated. For their families to grieve, for strangers to honor, for their memories to be kept alive. It has been a truly labor of love. Now some other special touches that Troy put into this memorial. There are two bricks from the building where the shooting took place after it was demolished. They brought two of those bricks here. One is paved at the entrance and another is paved at the exit of the memorial. And then also there are 13 trees planted for the 13 that were killed and 30 rose bushes are also around the memorial for those that are wounded. So a lot of special, special touches put in by Troy. Nikki. Beautiful story, Tiffany. What a tribute. Really incredible. Great job. Thanks so much. We have a slight chance of rain this weekend. Chief Meteorologist Andy Anderson is joining us now with the forecast. It's looking better already. Uh, we're looking around and seeing a lot of blue skies around central Texas. Still a bit of rain, still falling across portions of the area. Just to the north of Temple, back towards the north end of Lake Belton, we're seeing some rain around Moody. Everything moving out of the south east back towards the northwest rotating around that low pressure down along the Gulf Coast. Here's the outlook. We'll still see patches of rain tonight and generally cloudy skies 63 degrees by 7 o'clock and we'll be down around 59 by bedtime tonight. We've got complete details on your weekend outlook coming up a little later in the news. All right, Andy, thanks so much. Officials confirm the body of Falls County rancher Harold Frank was found this afternoon. Frank went missing Wednesday near Big Creek along Highway 6 while trying to rescue his livestock from floodwaters. KCE and HD News reporter Amanda Del Castillo joins us now with the latest. Amanda. Nikki, Falls County Constable Richard Alamon Jr. says 56-year-old Harold Frank's body was found around 4.20 p.m. Officials spent most of the morning narrowing the search area after they found Frank's clothing 
roughly 500 yards from where he was last seen Wednesday. More boats assisted in today's search and efforts also continued on land. While the rain didn't stop the search for the missing father of three, conditions made it impossible to conduct an area search. Constable Aleman says the combination of narrowing the search area and the use of cadaver dogs helped to locate Frank's body. Nikki. All right, Amanda, thanks so much. And we'll be right back. Well, we knew it had to come to an end eventually. We're seeing an end of the rain now. It's not over just yet, but we're getting awfully close. A lot of the activity is pushed out across West Texas and the area west of I-35 is probably going to be more favored for additional rain tonight and tomorrow. We're still tracking a lot of moisture moving up off the Gulf of Mexico into central Texas. Now, in most cases, this is still very light precipitation, but we are tracking a couple of rather large areas of moderate rain falling from near Bell Falls on over towards Troy and Pendleton curving on over uh, in the area around Moffitt just to the north and northwest of Temple there. You look a little further south, but there's still plenty of moisture upstream. Moving in from down towards Yoakum and Gonzales in that area and still pushing up even from the Gulf Coast around Corpus Christi. The, this is heading our way. It is not going to give up yet. The low is still circulating down to the south of us, but it's going to push across our area or just to the south of us overnight tonight and out of here by tomorrow evening. And as it does, we'll still see some wraparound moisture in the area. Baylor's Cotton White Health Skyline Weather Camera. This is in Waco and you're seeing blue skies showing up, breaking some of that cloud cover. But what we're going to see is more wraparound clouds and wraparound moisture on that low. So uh, it's not going to be a, a beautiful evening just yet. We're going to see more rain. 66 right now. Calm wind, 75% relative humidity. Looking for a low tonight down to 53. Patches of widespread drizzle, uh, some embedded showers, much like what we're seeing going on right now. Rain chance is standing at 50%. Southeast winds around 5 miles an hour tonight. I think by morning you're going to see some patches of fog around the area. We'll hang on to about a 20% chance of a, a morning shower. My original thinking this afternoon would be that it was going to clear up by 3 o'clock tomorrow afternoon, but it may clear out before that. We'll make it up to around 73 degrees with southwest winds drying the atmosphere out around 5 to 10 miles an hour. There's the low sitting down near Laredo right now. Moisture coming in off the Gulf of Mexico. Frontal boundary pushing up through our area now, keeping the rain chances alive. Going to go about 20% chances of rain early part of the day, maybe a tenth of an inch of additional moisture force. Time change tomorrow night. Spring forward one hour before you go to bed. Winds increase for us on Sunday, rather gusty, so that will help dry things out for us. Uh, it's also going to help warm things up, too. High of 80 on Sunday, 85 on Monday. It'll be a dry day on Tuesday as well. Wednesday, we start seeing moisture working its way back in. St. Patrick's Day on Thursday, we'll be introducing rain chances once again. About 20% chances in the morning, 30% through much of the day into the evening hours, and 40% chances of rain on Friday. So a little bit of a drying out period for us. Does not look like heavy rain coming next week, but moisture in place for us once again. All right, Andy, thanks so much. We'll be right back. The Baylor men's basketball team is taking on Kansas right now in the Big 12 tournament semifinals. We'll get to them in just a bit, but first we've got some Baylor football news to talk about, and it's not good. Bears running back, backup running back Devin Chafin was arrested this morning in Oklahoma for possession of marijuana. The Tillman County Sheriff's Department says they pulled over a car that Chafin was driving for speeding. Officers found marijuana and marijuana candy in that car. Officers say that Chafin and his passenger both admitted to buying the weed products while on spring break in Colorado. Chafin is a fifth year senior and has played 30 career games as a reserve running back for the Bears. Baylor head coach Art Bryles says that Chafin has been suspended until further information is gathered. So back to the Baylor men's basketball team. The 22nd ranked Bears beat Texas in the Big 12 tournament quarterfinals yesterday. And now they have a very tough semifinal test against number one Kansas. Baylor has never beaten a AP number one ranked team. This one just got underway a few moments ago. Right now, Kansas is leading 13 to 11 early in the first half. We'll have full highlights and post game reaction coming up tonight at 10 to the SEC tournament where number where one seed Texas A&M is taking on Florida and the quarterfinals first half Aggies down two. Alex Caruso drives. 
finds Tyler Davis underneath for the slam. Skip ahead, second half, under two minutes to play. Aggies force the turnover. Caruso races to the rim, protects the ball, and gets the layup to fall. We're going to see that one more time because it's that impressive. Can't block that shot. AM takes the 65-61 lead, and they're going to extend that lead just seconds later. Daniel House drains the three as the shot clock is winding down. His first field goal of the second half, the Aggies hang on to win 72-66. to uh, It was huge. Uh, Florida came out. They played yesterday. They got familiar, familiarized with the, the floors the, the and how hard the balls were. But we came out. Uh, we executed like Coach Kennedy said. It was an ugly game. Both teams played hard. We played scrappy. And I'm just grateful that we got the victory. The Aggies will take on LSU in the SEC tournament semifinals tomorrow at noon. So the Aggies got the win. We're hoping that uh, that Baylor can mm -hmm. get the win tonight. Will be mm -hmm. that would be huge for the Bears to beat Kansas. Was it like the last seven times they've lost or something mm -hmm. like that? And they've tall yeah, order. Yeah, but there's two Baylor's actually two and one okay. against Kansas in tournament games since 2009. But they are, I believe, 0 and 0 and 15 when okay. uh, teams rank number one in the AP poll. So yikes, tough test. <laughs> All right, thanks, Jessica. We'll be right back. President Obama arrived in Austin today for South by Southwest. The president challenged the technology gurus and entrepreneurs in the crowd to make government more savvy and accessible. Obama said he wants the private sector to find better ways to protect the government and the American people from cyber threats. The reason I'm here really is to recruit all of you. Uh, it's to, to say to you as I'm about to leave office, uh, how can we start coming up with new platforms, new ideas, new approaches across disciplines and across uh, uh, skill sets uh, to solve some of the big problems uh, that we're facing today. The president's keynote speech is the first by a sitting president in the festival's 30-year history. First Lady Michelle Obama will speak at South by Southwest next week. We'll be right back. We're out of time. We'll see you back here at 10.